Welcome to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast with Dat Boy Mo 629 Discussing everything fitness and everything motivation. Here is where you will get your fitness education and motivational fix. Now, here's your host, Dat Boy Mo 629 What's up, everybody? It's Dat Boy Mo 629 coming to y'all with another edition of the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast. And I'd like to thank y'all for tuning in with me for my fifth episode of the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast. Let's get it popping. I just got done with another YouTube upload of Grab a Pass. This time I was talking about Nitro Way. I mean, Nitro Surge, rather, from Jack Factory. I did a Grab a Pass on Nitro Surge, the pre-workout. Go and check that video out on YouTube right now on the H1 Warrior channel. This episode is about fitness assessments and why I believe they are important. This is a fitness and motivational podcast, so I want to talk about, you know, fitness-related stuff along with motivational stuff and self-improving stuff. So, fitness assessments, why are they important? In the world of social media, you see a lot of, especially on Instagram. Instagram, you know, I like Instagram a lot, but I'm not a real big fan of Instagram because Instagram to me is like a, is a short clip of, of fake reality. And there's a lot of stuff going on on Instagram that, I, that turns me off on Instagram, and I see it more and more often. But I'm on Instagram so I can stay close to my base, so I can stay close to my audience, you know what I'm saying, so my audience can see what I got going on, I can see what they got going on. And we had built a... Uh, a, a Kind of like a camaraderie, so to speak. So that's why I'm on Instagram. So if you you have an Instagram, don't forget to visit me at uh, datboymo629 on Instagram. And also, as I said before, I'm on YouTube also. I also got a Facebook page. So go on over to Facebook and hit me up on Facebook, H1 Warrior, datboymo629. But the fitness assessments, why do I believe these are important? And why I believe that Instagram and, you know, social media really don't press assessments. You see a lot of influence out, influencers out there that be doing a little workouts, you know what I'm saying, that offer coaching and stuff like that. But they don't really stress assessing clients on the profiles, on their pages, or anything like that. I'm not sure if they do it. I'm not sure if they don't. Well, I'm just going by what I see. So... What I want to say, man, pretty much is that the fitness assessments are important for clients who are deconditioned. And what that means is you are not in shape somewhere in your body to do certain workouts. Like there's even, you believe, everybody says, do squats. Do squats to build muscle. Do squats to burn fat. Do squats to build your core. But it doesn't say anything about people who can't do squats. You'll never know. They probably had knee replacement surgery. They probably had lower back surgery where they can't do squats. So this is the importance of uh, assessments, right? People, There are people out there, such as myself, such as everybody else out there, that are unaware of their weaknesses before working out. Like if you haven't worked out ever or worked out in a long time, let's just say you haven't worked out in two years. You haven't worked out in two years and... uh Let's just say you haven't worked out in two whole years, but you used to work out avidly. So you think in your mind you still got you still got it from two years ago. You don't. You don't know what happened. You could have had a baby. You could have got a job or you, a job change to where you're doing construction or you're a waiter or you're an accountant sitting on your butt more or you're a cashier standing up more. You just don't know what type of condition change along with not working out change over those two years so getting a fitness assessment will be able to tell you along with your trainer what body parts what muscles are weakened or have been weakened right lengthen or shorten during that time frame so you want to get a fitness assessment right and fitness self assessments help prevent injury Right by putting the client on the correct regimen, aligned with their goals. Right, so if you are on a regimen that are aligned with your goals, but you have not been assessed, you could be doing more harm than good, because you may have, I don't know, you may have uh, tendonitis in the elbow, but I'm telling you to do push-ups, 
right? I'm telling you not to stretch out your elbow flexors. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, you need to get assessed. Once again, marathon runners don't want to be in a program where all they doing is power lifting, right? They don't want to do power lifting moves. They want to do high rep stabilization and and endurance moves so they can run marathon sprinters. They don't need all that endurance. If you're a sprinter, all you need pretty much is to increase your speed. You need to increase your speed. Your endurance level, right, will help. But you need to increase your speed. So they need to be assessed. Quarterbacks, they need a different workout regimen than defensive ends and wide receivers and running backs and punters and kickers and vice versa. You got bodybuilding. And one of the misconceptions about Instagram Right, so this is like an Instagram brand, I guess you want to say. Is uh, and, and especially when you talk about fitness, it's like bodybuilding is the the go-to fitness regimen. That's it. If you're not a bodybuilder, you ain't lifting. If you're not a bodybuilder, you ain't in shape. If you're not a bodybuilder, then your workout don't count. But everybody don't understand is that everybody don't want to be a bodybuilder. Now, how do I train, right? I don't train as a bodybuilder, but I train like similar to the bodybuilding training split, so to speak. So, me, my main goal is maximal strength and hypertrophy. That, 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 that's phase three and four in the OPT module for NASM, which is my uh, certification goal right there. So, hypertrophy and maximal strength are the two phases that I work in. That's building muscle and building my strength, right? Because I want to be, I want to be toned and I want to be strong, right? So those are the two phases that I'm working in. Now, hypertrophy and maximal strength falls in line with the body building scope because of those are my goals. But if there's a woman out there that don't want to be uh, have hypertrophy or maximal strength. She just want to improve her endurance and her stabilization, right? I won't put her on a program to build muscle. I won't put her on a program to build strength. I will put her on a program to build her balance, to build her stabilization up so she can, you know, have endurance. She can do planks for two, three minutes, right? So she can do one-legged squat exercise, stuff like that. I'll put her on squats if she passed the assessment. There are many other leg exercises out there for you if you can't pass the squat assessment. Um, people with shoulder injuries. They can't do certain exercises that bodybuilders do. But you won't know that you have a shoulder injury or shoulder tightness or shoulder anything inhibition limits to your shoulders unless I put you through assessments. Like, if you have a shoulder injury, I'm not going to put you on a, let's just say, a push-up assessment. I may put you on a pull assessment. I may put you on an overhead squat assessment because guess what? You're not using your shoulders, so if your arm fall forward or anything like that, or you got upper cross syndrome, anything like that, I'll be able to determine that you have those issues and put you on a correct regimen or stretch, foam roll, stretch, trigger point therapy, whatever it is to get those knots out that help strengthen up those body parts. Obese people, pregnant women, skinny people need different assessments. A pregnant woman... Right, I'm not going to put her on an exercise such as planks because she's laying on her stomach, right, because of her condition. Obese people, they're more so if they can't do squats, then you put them on like the a like different assessment for like maybe cardiorespiratory assessment, stuff like that, right? The thing you really want to think about when you talk about assessments is that assessments, if, if I can give an analogy here assessments can be seen like a pre-inspection to your vehicle you want to know what on your car needs to be fixed or is out of order or going bad so to speak you just want an inspection on your car so in order to get an inspection for the mechanic to actually work on your vehicle 
they have to inspect it, right? So that's how I treat assessments. You want to know what to work on, and you want to know where, right, the weakness is at to improve the vehicle, a.k.a. your own body. So if you are out there and you get a fitness coach that's not certified or anything like that, I'm not saying that, now me personally, only reason I got certified is so I have more education in dealing with different people in the community, different types of people in the community. A lot of people that I dealt with before were female, that wasn't bodybuilders, that were just trying to lose weight. So me putting them on, you know, bodybuilder workouts, what I know, the only knew, right, was the only thing I knew when I tried to get them in shape. Hey, I want you to do X amount of cardio per day, per minute, 30 minutes a day, five days a week, and I want to put you on a 1,500-calorie diet. So that's what's going to happen. I'm going to get you, you know what I'm saying, about uh, one gram of protein per body weight. You weigh about 180, so I want you to get in 180 grams of protein, very low carb, very low fat, bam. That's it. And I want you to do... Work out with weights for a half hour, and I want you to work out on a treadmill, you know what I'm saying, on a stair climber for a half hour. You lose weight. You will lose weight with that. I'm not going to lie. You will lose weight with that. But is that the right program for that person? You see what I'm saying? You got to build a program where you add true quality as a fitness trainer or fitness coach. All right? When you add quality and customer service to your program, excuse me, I'm close as fuck to the mic, but to your program, you need to add quality. You need to make sure the customer is comfortable with you as their coach because you don't know how long it's really going to take for them to get to their goal. It can take my program that I'm developing. is There's a four-week, eight-week, 12-week, and 16-week program. So 16 weeks is four months, folks. So if your goal is to lose 10 pounds a month, within those four months, you should lose 40 pounds. You should Barring your hormonal differences and hormonal issues or whatever you got going on. So, like I said, the program that I'm going to start doing, I have not done it yet because I'm not not yet have my uh, certification. I have not passed my exam yet. I'm getting there, though. I'm scheduling my exam today, so you know what I'm saying? I'm scheduling my exam today, and we'll see what happens. But I'm not announcing anything, really. But... My program, because of all the education that I'm getting and all the new exercises that I'm getting, all the foods that I'm that I'm learning that people should eat, all the types of everything else, trigger point therapy, massage therapy, uh, uh, foam roll techniques that I'm learning, right? The programs that I'm going to have on my website, h1warrior.com, when it gets up and running, which will be within the next month or so, is... Four-week program, an eight-week program, which is two months, a 12-week program, which is three months, and a 16-week program, which is four months. Prices are to be determined, but I want to provide quality to my customer core so they have the confidence in me that I will get them to the destination they want to get to. There'll be weekly check-ins, there'll be photos, there'll be assess video assessments, all that stuff, all that stuff. I'm not giving you all my secrets right now. So, fitness assessments in the fitness industry is very, very, very important. You just don't know what kind of injury that you truly have, what kind of tightness you have, what kind of lengthened and shortened muscles that you have, the shortened muscles, the lengthened muscles, right? It's an imbalance of your muscles right there because both are not congruent and both are not equally working functionally. So that boy Mo 629 with another edition of the Started On and Finished podcast. Thank you for tuning in. For my fifth episode, stay tuned for the next one. See you when I see you. Peace. You've been listening to the Start It, Own It, Finish It podcast. Be sure to subscribe to receive new episodes. Link up with Dad Boy Mo 629 on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Or visit him at aceonewarrior.com. Until next time, start it, own it, Finish it.